Hi friends, Connie here. In this video, we are going to talk about five things to do in your first lesson with a three-year-old. First of all, if you're taking on a three-year-old, bless you and good luck. They, are, they have a whole new set of skills required from the teacher. So hopefully this video will help you get off to a really great start. Okay, let's not waste any more time and get started. The first thing that you want to have in your lesson with a new three-year-old is a game and some activities that teach right hand and left hand because they are just learning this. And in piano, that's going to be really important for them to know. Starting off, first thing, I like to do some little coloring activities. They like to color at that age and having them do a hands-on thing really helps them kind of learn better. So I am going to show you some worksheets that I use. I've also included a link in the description for these worksheets. They're free. You can download them and print as many as you'd like. One suggestion I have, if you're going to use them more than with one or two students, I would either get them laminated or print them on cardstock and put them in a page protector. Then the students can use a dry erase marker to do their coloring and you can just clean it off. They hold up a little better being heavy duty and you can reuse them by cleaning them off. So just a suggestion. All right, let's take a look at the worksheets. Here we go. This first one, it's just the right hand. Okay, you notice that I colored the, I have little fingernails on the hand. That is one way to help them get perspective so they know they're looking at the back of the hand. And I always use red for the right hand. So the red fingernails means it's the right hand. They have to put their right hand on this picture. Then they put their right hand on the paper right in the middle and trace it with red. And they can color in, a lot of them want to color in the fingernails, which is fine, that's great. Now this is the left hand, and the fingernails of the left hand will be blue. They place their hand on the picture. Then they place their hand on the blank paper here and trace their hand with blue. Last page is recognizing right hand and left hand. See all the fingernails are just gray and they, they can look back and compare. They have the paper right here and right here to look, but for the right hands, they have to color red. Now, some of them will want to just color the fingernails red. Some want to color the whole thing red. And this is where you get to see how artistic they are. <laughs> some will just scribble on it really quick and they're done. Whatever is fine. We're not teaching art, we're teaching piano and we want them to learn right and left hands. So when they can identify all those hands, then we're done with those worksheets. Okay, I'm gonna give you three options for every one of these five things. So if you do the math, that's 15 activities and their lesson should really be no longer than 15 minutes. So you'll barely have time to get through all of these. There's more that I think than you can use. So, but you've got things that you can use in the following weeks and the following lessons to come. Okay, the second thing to do with the right and left hand is to do a high five game. All right, give me a high five with your right hand. Now that we've done the worksheet to identify right and left, high five. Now I'm not sure on the camera if I'm reversed, is this right or is this right? This is my right hand, but it probably looks left on the camera. So. When you do, and this is what could be confusing for the child as well, when you're standing face to face, we're gonna do high fives. Well, when their right hand comes up, I'm gonna do, this is my left, but it matches their right. I'm not gonna cross over to match their right. That's a little confusing. As they're a couple years older, they'll be able to understand kind of the mirror image of when you're facing someone, but for now, you're gonna to have to be thinking because when you say right hand, you're actually gonna put up your left and do a high five. And then when you say left hand, you high five with your right hand and their left. So you might need to practice a little bit first. All right, right hand, bam. Left hand, bam. How about both hands, bam. So you're just gonna do a high five activity where you're high fiving with the hand that you call out. Now a, a little change up for this activity is now let them call out which hand. They like to do that. They like to play teacher. Another activity to do to learn right and left hand is a book. 
I found this book on Amazon and it is great. It teaches right hand and left hand. Uh, the reason I like this book is it's got like a place to put their hands on each page. It covers more than just right or left. It goes into like what your hands can do, but it, it does cover right and left really pretty well. This is not the only resource out there. I get no affiliate links or anything, but I have linked this book down in the description. So if you want this, you can go on Amazon and get it. There's lots of others available for that preschool age, teaching right and left hands. If you want to research and find your own, that's fine. Anyway, this is just a res uh, resource that you can use. So in teaching the right and left hand, we have a coloring activity, we have a high five activity, and we have a book to read. If you're trying to fit all of these into every lesson, don't spend any more than one minute on each activity. Okay, on to the second thing to do with a three-year-old in their first lesson. All right, right and left hand. If you've ever taught these littles before, you know that they're going to put the wrong hand up on the piano. And you have to say, nope, it's the right hand. Nope, right hand. How do they know the right hand? No, it's the left hand. One phrase that I commonly use with these little kids is, oops, it's the other right hand. And the parents will kind of chuckle, but the kids get it. Oh, all right, it's this right hand. Well, we're going to teach you a game that's going to come in very handy. We're kind of doing a training activity for when they put the wrong hand up and you want them to switch hands so you don't have to explain it and so they understand exactly what you want them to do. And they're trained to do it really quickly. This game is called Switch. We're doing the switch hands game. All right, so show me your right hand. And they show their right hand. And then you say, switch. They switch hands. And switch. And show me. And so you teach them, when I say switch, you're going to switch hands. Now I'm going to say some other words, and you have to wait till I say switch. Okay, just stay on the same hand until I say switch. So we start with the right hand, and you can say bananas, macaroni, switch. Okay, and did you see how when I said switch, I said it really fast and animated and a little higher pitched? That's giving them more cues that that's the time to switch. When they get it, I would do that maybe once or twice. Then the next time, okay, they've switched hands, and you can say monkey, playground, switch. So it's kind of in the same tone as and same speed as the other words. And do they recognize the switch? And then you could speed up the switch. So we said switch. Okay, now switch, switch. Hmm, book, teacher, switch, switch. So just play that. And then, then, let them be the teacher and tell you when to switch. Now have them color a picture. This you just need, you can use a coloring book that has the picture or just a blank piece of paper. And I tell them to draw something very specific. I want you to draw a house with a tree, a big tree in the front yard, and there's a monkey hiding in the tree. Are you ready? Okay, and at this stage, just so you know, three-year-olds should have established hand dominance. So they're going to start coloring with their dominant hand. So now you know. All right, so they're coloring probably the right hand. That's the most common dominant hand. And as they're coloring, you say, switch. And they have to switch hands, put the crayon in their other hand and try to color. And you can talk about how it's hard with their other hand maybe. And now they color for a minute and you say, switch. So you switch back and forth as they color. But giving them enough time to get coloring in especially if they are an artistic child or they like to color. Not all kids do, but if they do, give them a little more time to finish their picture. There's another game that a lot of young kids play. As they're learning their words and their body parts, you play this a lot. Where's your nose? Touch your nose. That's when they're younger than three, but they know what to do. All right, I want you to touch your nose with your right hand. Now switch. Touch your head with your right hand. Now switch. Touch your shoulder with your left hand. Now switch. So anything, that, and then around in the room. All right, I want you to go touch the bookcase with your right hand. Sometimes you don't switch. Sometimes you do it faster. Switch, switch, switch. As much as you think they can handle and changing it up a little bit. Okay, so those are three ways that you can play the switch game. 
And believe me, you'll thank me later when they start with the left hand and all you have to say is switch and they know what to do and pff, now they're with, they've got the correct hand. The third thing to do with a three-year-old at their first lesson is to teach the black keys. I start with just the two black keys. They'll recognize that there's three. They may even, you may need to even correct them if they find the three. Nope, there's three right there. We're only looking at the two. But I focus on the two because I teach that as if it's a cave. Because on a cave, there's one side of the cave, there's the other side of the cave. And if you imagine a curved, a curved little top, that's a cave. Okay, now we're going to use these two fingers. That's the, most of them can hold up their two fingers. They started learning to do that when they turned two. All right, so they, with these two fingers, we're going to find the caves. And then you play the cave with those two fingers. Bing, bing, play that. Okay, the second activity with that is to play caves that are high on the piano and low on the piano and in the middle of the piano. This is a good time to teach high sounds, low sounds, and middle sounds. Although that's not the focus right now, it's more about playing those caves high, low, and middle. But it is combining those two ideas at the same time. Another idea is to have the student start at the bottom of the piano and play every single cave going up the piano. And you tell them which hand to start with, because now we've established right and left. All right, with your right hand, start at the bottom cave, and we're going to play all the caves going up. And you didn't tell them you were going to do this, but as they get about halfway up the piano, you say, switch. And let's see if they remember. Okay, they switch hands and go up. Now they're going to start at the top of the piano and come down, and you can say switch a couple of times. So you're reinforcing that and combining a couple of activities into one. All right, so those are some of the ways to, yeah, to teach them the two black keys. Always a good option on this is to switch places, let them be the teacher and tell you when to switch. They get a kick out of that. Our fourth thing to do with a three-year-old at their lesson is to teach what is in the middle of the cave. There is something that lives inside that cave. We have the two black keys. Well, inside those two black keys is a white key. What is that that's inside there? It's a dragon, and his name is Dave. So we meet Dave the dragon. Okay, now we're going to play Dave the dragon. We use this finger. I don't tell them the finger numbers yet. This finger, and we curve it like a hook. Okay, so we're going to play Dave with our hooked finger. And you see if they can play Dave. Wow, that was excellent. That was great. Okay, Dave. Now see if you can play it with your left hand. Okay, play it with your right hand. Now switch and switch, and you can play the switch game with that too. Okay, another thing that we're going to do now that we know Dave is that white note between the two, the two black keys is find high Daves and low Daves and middle See if they can find play on Dave that's really high. Now play one that's really low. Play one that's right in the middle of the piano. The third thing, like we did with the two black keys, have the student start with the left hand on the lowest Dave on the piano and find every Dave going up the piano and guess what you're going to say? Switch. A couple of times you'll say switch so that they know to switch hands. Then also you can trade places with the student, have them tell you when to switch and see if maybe you can make a mistake and play a note that's not D, that's not Dave, and have them catch it. If you like what you've seen so far in the video, would you please give it a quick like? That helps us get the word out and helps other people see it as well. Thank you. The fifth thing to do in your first lesson with a three-year-old is a rhythm activity. There's a couple of rhythm activities. I want to share with you that I like doing. First of all, we are not at this stage going to teach um, notes like what a quarter note is or even counts. I am going to do some counting, but I'm not explaining what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. All right, so first of all, we're going to clap and keep the beat to the music. This is where you're not just teaching them, but you're observing how well they can keep that beat with the music because you might need to find some more activities to just do that before we move on. If they can keep a beat steady pretty well, then you know you're not going to need to spend a lot of time on that and you can start getting ready to move to the next concept. Okay, the first one is a copy. Copy the teacher. 
All right, I want you to copy what I do. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four, but I'm not really explaining it. I'm just going to clap. One, two, three, four. Now you. And let's see how well they keep that steady beat that you've established. And then do different movements with that. Tap your shoulders. One, two, three, four. Now you. Touch your ears. One, two, whatever you want to do. And then switch it back. Have them do something and you copy them. And it'll be interesting to see if they count and to see if they do four. If they caught on to that pattern or not. The second thing that you can do to help with rhythm is to play some music. Um, you could play some on the piano, which would be great, but I'd recommend you have um, YouTube or something right there on a device so that you can be focused on them instead of looking at the piano. Have them play some music. There's lots. If you just Google, or you could either do it on Google or just on YouTube and search children's music, upbeat. Oh, there's lots for them to dance to. So let them free move and free dance and see how they keep the beat. All right, here's another option. This is a YouTube channel called, I believe it's called Music with Mrs. Gibbs. I will put a link to her channel down below because I love some of the things that she does. She has a lot of rhythm activities and she'll have the same game in four different levels. So the some of the very base levels is just keeping a steady beat. The second level up would be like quarter notes and quarter rests, maybe a half note, and then the rhythm gets a little more complex. So I can have that same game and play it with all different levels of my students. I, I really like that variety. And this one is just a keeping the beat. The video is about three minutes long. I'm just going to play like a 30 second clip so you can get an idea of what it is. And it's called Would You Rather? So they pose a question, would you rather do this or that? And based on what you choose, that's the movement that you have to do with the music. And it has you repeat it through four measures of music. Right. See, it's colorful, it's fun, it's upbeat music, and that is the level of just keeping a beat, either marching or the other ones kind of doing it with their, with their arms. And it's all kinds of movements. I love these videos. The kids like them too. So it's a good get to wriggles out, and it's a good way to um, play with some rhythm. Here is the bonus. For a fun activity at the very end of their lesson, have the student make up their own song using... The cave, Dave, and switching their hands. And let's see what they come up with. Like a perfect cadence, this is the end.